Hi there. In this video, I will discuss about the best practices of email template design for graphic designers, not for HTML designers. That will be discussed in the next video. So let's get started. At first, I will give you a, an idea of how an ideal email design should look like. You will see ideal email template designs in ThemeForest. You can just go to themeforest.net and go to marketing then email templates to see this. Emails are basically rectangular in shape. Uh, this is designed rectangular to make it well viewable in most platforms. The web in the web design, website templates can have web sections like this, such overlaps, such floating items, so CSS3, uh, animations, and many more, but email templates are limited to uh, the rectangular designs. Due to code limitations, emails are more simple, more rectangular in shape. Here you can see some ideal email structures in ThemeForest. I opened these two, and you can see these are all rectangular in shape. Okay, before proceeding, I will uh, show something. Uh, in this video, I will discuss about the best practices of editable, responsive, reusable templates. If the template is for one-time use, non-responsive, not reusable, and sections are images rather than real text and separate images, you can design it freely as you wish, but for a responsive, editable, and reusable email templates the limitations will apply what is a responsive email design this is an ideal example of a responsive email template responsive uh, email template reacts with the screen size of the receiving client that means it will change itself according to the screen size of desktop mobile and other devices so what happens if I show it in a mobile device? Let's see. The columns stacks in a single column in mobile devices like this. You can see there are two columns and it will uh, stack in mobile devices. This will go first and this will go uh, uh, below to this image like this in mobile devices. So if you make a template like this, this one, uh, this one is not a uh, mobile responsive email template. This template is non-editable. These things are all images. These things are all images. These texts are not real images. This text is an image. These texts are not real images. This is image as well. So this. Uh, template is non reusable this template is for one time use for one time use you can design it as you want but for reusable editable and mobile responsive email template you have to keep the limitations in mind so let's dive in point number one average section overlaps and multi-section crossing see this template the left side image overlaps these three sections and crosses these three sections. It will make problem when a coder will code it as a reusable, editable, responsive email template. It's not possible to replicate such a structure using supported email codes. So it's not a responsive and editable email template. It will look the same on desktop and mobile devices. You see, this template is shown on a mobile screen the texts are very small the, uh, the columns doesn't stack together and it's uh, very hard to read in such a small screen the problem of non-responsive email template is this you have to use this text as image not a real text and some email client blocks images automatically so it becomes unreadable on those so if you just so if you avoid such uh, section overlaps then the text can be real text 
the template can be responsive and well readable in mobile and other devices. So you should avoid SAS uh, overlapping sections at all cost. Number two. Number two, avoid a scope of CSS positioning. In this template, these two structure are, are the problems. See, this uh, this structure is floating in the horizontal and vertical area of the text. This is the text area. This element overlaps the horizontal and this this element overlaps the vertical and horizontal line of this text. This requires CSS positioning in quotes to make it happen. It's possible in, in the web templates, but due to the code limitations of email templates, such things is not possible. The same issue is for this area. This element crosses the section, crosses the horizontal and vertical area of this element. It can cross a single area like either horizontal or vertical, but it crosses both. For this section, the theory is same. It crosses the both section, both horizontal and vertical area of this uh, of this element. So, if you see an element does this process both vertical and horizontal area, then you should avoid this. If it just uh, crosses the vertical area, it can be doable. But if it overlaps like this and crosses the both horizontal and vertical area of this text or of any element then you should avoid this. Point number three, give elements its own space. See in this template this text is for this image and this text is for this image. In mobile devices these two columns should stack and this text should go below this image and this text should go below this image. But how now it's designed, the elements does not have its own space. Suppose like this element doesn't have its own space. This space, space is occupied by a little portion of this image. In this case, it should be just two blocks like this and this. And in mobile devices, this block will go first and this block will go second as this image is for this text if this image go underneath here it will not make any sense and this text is for this image so if this image goes underneath this one and this one like here and this text remains here with this image it will not make sense as well. So to avoid these things, you have to allow the space for this section and you have to allow the space for this section as well. It should not cross like this. Point number four, be careful about gradient use. Gradients are great. It gives life to the design, but in emails, it has some limitations. All platform will not show it. So, you should keep a fallback color while using a gradient. Unsupported clients will show that fallback color instead of this gradient color. Point number five, design keeping the dark mode in mind. Some event platforms inverse the color automatically in dark mode like Gmail app and the coders have no control over it. And for some other platforms like Apple Mail in dark mode, Coders can control it, but where there is no control and the color inversion is a must to design, you should keep things in mind. In this design, you see a transparent black logo over a white background. In Gmail app dark mode, the background color will invert and become black. So a black PNG over a black background will be unreadable. To get rid of this, you can keep some white background below the logo like this possibly a white padding around it and with some border radius to make it looking better or you can add some little white shadows like this to make it well readable in dark mode as well using the background image for dark mode 
this is a dark background and white text over it. In dark mode, the image color will remain unchanged, but the text color will invert to dark and over a dark background, the black text will be unreadable. So you have to use some contrast like this that will show good on both dark and light mode. Either you can use a different color for the headline instead of the white or you can add some opacity opacity below the text or add some background below the text to make it to keep it readable in dark mode point number five avoid using forms form does not work on many clients like this you can see a few clients will show it and others will not there are other reasons as well it causes spam trigger and red alerts in gmail instead you can use a cda button link to the external form on the website form inside email template itself can reuse the email submission or form submission highly you can keep the form as an image like this in this template you see a form and this is not a real form this is an image and it will be linked to an external form on the website or somewhere else but this is not a real form point number seven keep unsubscribe option for marketing emails this uh, this option is required for marketing emails such as newsletter offer etc for transactional emails it's not necessary transactional emails are password reset email receipt emails or order received emails or something like that point number six Point number six, careful about custom font using. The most supported fonts for emails are system default fonts like this. Custom fonts are supported on a limited number of platforms like iOS, Outlook for Mac and Apple Mail. Other platforms will not show it properly. They will just show a system default font as fallback. If you want to use custom fonts, the first choice will be the Google font. You can see the available Google fonts on fonts.google.com. If you want to use custom font, the first choice is a Google font. If it's not a Google font, then the font should be hosted at client's web server and a web developer should supply the font face kit which requires some work around. To avoid, you can either use a system font or a Google font with a fallback. For number 9, careful about GIF or animated emails using. It is supported on most platforms, but Windows Outlook app shows the first frame of the GIF. If your GIF is incomplete at the first frame or does not give a clear idea in the first frame, it will not be a good idea for Outlook. See these examples. This gives give a clear idea if it's a logo in the first frame. So it's fine. For this one, this does not show the states in the first frame. So the Outlook Windows app users will show just trust me, which doesn't make the sense. So you should avoid such GIF in your next email design. Point number 10, email with best practices. Uh, email with have some limitations. And the best practice is to use the 600 pixels to 800 pixels width. Uh, you can design one with 500 pixel or 400 pixel, but you cannot cross the 800 pixels limit. If you cross this, then it will make some issues on various platforms and have some responsive output problems. This is 600 pixel width template. This one is 800 pixels width and this is actually a full width template but you, you can notice that the email content is limited to 800 pixels or something smaller here. You can keep some area, you can keep some background color full width like this or if you have a line of text that uh, you need to add as a disclaimer or a footer text that you can make full width but 
the email wrapper itself should be below 800 pixels width the best is 600 pixels or around 600 pixels point number 11 avoid making the template too long this is one of my clients email template design he provided me this PSD file to convert it, uh, convert it in responsive HTML email template. But I see there are lots of information in the template and it's very long. When I converted it, uh, it did not load properly in Gmail like this and it shows message clipped. If you use a uh, lots of information, uh, a lots of complex structures like this it contains a lot uh, it contains a lots of columns like this and lots of small elements like this so it made some issues on gmail the message get clipped in gmail if the template is too long and you have to click on view entire message to see the template completely here is the complete template to avoid this you should keep uh, the structure simple and don't make the template too long if you want to uh, if you want to include more information then you can have a CTA button like read more people can click there and see the full content on the external web page uh, so try to keep your content smaller to avoid message clipping in gmail Point number 12, 60 40 rule of image text ratio. See this template. This template is image major. Most of the space is occupied by this image and a little space is for text, which is not an ideal approach. This can lead to a spam trigger. So, the best practice is use minimum of 60% of text and 40% of emails. You can use 50-50 but the investor's ratio thing is not a bulletproof thing for all companies. Uh, some big companies use just images on their email designs and there is no real HTML or editable text. But that is exception because the big brands have its own reputation already and have a positive record on different spam filters. So it's better to keep the text more than images. In the next video, I will discuss about best practices of email template design for HTML designers or developers. You can follow or subscribe my channel to get the next updates. Thanks for watching and bye for now.